What a season it was for Tiverton this past season. Uh, so in this episode, we're going to look at the season review. We'll get into transfers and then our first match of the new season in the new league. So let's roll the intro, get into that. Don't forget, please hit the like button, subscribe for daily football manager content. And thank you so much for choosing to hang out with me for a little while. Hey guys, RC here, back with episode 22 of Play the Kids, our youth challenge with Tiverton Town. And we had a great season, so let's take a look at the season review. Uh, we'll take a look at all the transfers in. Slam Dunk, the board didn't like any of our transfers, uh, just a couple of them, but Slam Dunk, we got an F. Christian Simmons, we got an F. I think he'll be okay, he'll be depth for us. But now that we're getting promoted, hopefully a lot of these guys become expendable and we can, you know, work on the next generation. But that's also part of the save. We need to try to develop through the youth system. So a lot of these guys may still be forced to play for a while. Uh, Quentin Hemmings, they didn't like that. I think he had a great year. 10 goals and a 7.19 rating and 48 starts. Ken Humphreys, we got a B and 59 appearances for him in goal. Benjamin Ireland, I think, uh, you know, 43 starts, 11 goals, 19 assists, and we get an F grade from the board. Thank you very much. Eden Allard, we paid the same amount and much less production, and they like that. Go figure. Dave Hugel, we got a C plus. John Rawlings, we got an F. Aaron Lowe's the lone player, we got a C. He didn't even play. I think, you know, what, five matches off the bench. Bissix, we got an F. And Is Cuerto, we got an E. Um, yeah, you know, I mean, I think we got our money's worth out of Is Cuerto. He could have been better. Um, I don't think he performed as well as he could. And uh, that's going to be something we'll have to address. He is only 22, so fingers crossed. On the outgoing, we had five players depart. Macaulay Robertson leaves. Grant Wilkins, we got a C for him on the $9,750 that we brought in. James Sloan, we sent him out on the free. Remember, he uh, just got in my face, and I didn't appreciate that. Uh, Adam Murphy, the goalkeeper, a B-minus grade, selling him to crew. And Aiden Halil, we got a B grade on that. Take a look at the season results in the league. Uh, we were expected to finish mid-table. Of course, we won the league by 42 points. That's not bad. 14% uh, average home attendance. We need a little bit more support from the local crowd here, guys. Graham Williams, 48 goals uh, in the as the competition's top scorer. So that's great. In the FA Cup, we were supposed to reach the third qualifying round. Instead, we made it to the third round and four goals apiece from Williams and Tim Cook. Uh, so very, very good run there before Tranmere took us out in a replay. And then in the FA Trophy, we were supposed to reach the first round. Instead, we went all the way to Wembley and finished runners up. Eight goals from Graham Williams in that competition, and we get a B grade for that. I don't know what else the board wants. Taking a look at finances, uh, no new sponsorships yet. Again, I think that comes a little bit later. Uh, sponsorship was the same. We'd like to get some bigger sponsorships this year. Uh, broadcast revenue, thanks to the cup runs, were up $100,000. Uh, we were also up about $50,000 in corporate and hospitality. Uh, competition prize money, uh, that was mainly due to the cup wins uh, because our league didn't pay any money, I don't think. Uh, that went up uh, almost $300,000 and about $40,000 additional in match day commercial and retail. Uh, we did have merchandise sales of uh, $3,500. Non-domestic sales were $352. So uh, some of my American brethren jumping on the uh, bandwagon and buying some merchandise. 51 kit jerseys sold, led by Williams, Mudge, Cook, Ireland, and Nuevo. Those were all attacking players. So <laughs> we know where the fans lie. Our starting 11 for the year, Ken Humphreys, uh, Taylor, Tierney, Hemmings, and Isquierdo, Ireland, Bliss, and White. 
in the mid, Nuevo at the number 10, Mudge and Williams up top. Uh, you know, just looking at this, definitely need to get better production out of our left and right backs. I think Nuevo will come into form. And, you know, Bliss was the record holder until this season, the end of this season, for the youngest uh, player to make his debut for the club. So certainly some room for him to grow and develop. Uh, but, you know, Ireland, Mudge, Williams all played well. And our, you know, central defense and goalkeeper, they were rock solid for most of the season. I was named head coach of the month for the National League South six times. So that's not bad. Uh, club awards, Graham Williams, fan player of the season, young player of the season, Quentin Hemming signing of the season, even though we got an F grade from the board. Graham Williams had the goal of the season. He was the top scorer with 60 goals. Robin Mudge, 20 assists, and he was a striker. Uh, most player of the matches with 18 was Graham Williams. Highest average rating was Graham Williams. And John Bliss, 34 passes completed per 90 minutes. That was in the uh, club awards. No competition awards. A lot of records set this year. Graham Williams, most goals. Most league goals by a player was Williams with 48. Most goals in a match by a player, four for Williams. Four is the most goals in a league match. Most assists, Robin Mudge. Ken Humphreys, 19 shutouts. Uh, so the most shutouts by a player. Most man of the matches, 18 for Williams. 19 yellow cards for Hemmings at center back. So he had the worst discipline. 121 appearances, most league appearances by a player. And that will continue to develop for the time being. Graham Williams, 85 goals, the most league goals by a player. Chris Brunt uh, is now the new youngest player. It was John Bliss, but Curtis Brunt, 15 years, 347 days. And the youngest goal scorer at 16 years, 157 days, John Bliss. Our best 11 welcomes in uh, six players. Ken Humphreys was the pick. Uh, Benjamin Ireland, Eden Allard, Joe, John Bliss, Jose Luis Nuevo, and Dave Hugel were also selected in there, and they are all in the starting 11. So Mudge Williams. Uh, yeah, that's that's Bay is the only guy from the first season. Uh, Bissix is going to be falling out. Bliss Cotterell is going to be falling out. Uh, but yeah, we recognize all these players. All right, we've had some takeover rumors that have cropped up during the year, but uh, evidently a local businessman wants to take over the club, but that doesn't look to be happening now. We do get two new sponsorship deals, a new main jersey sponsor, so that's worth $6,500. Uh, it's about $500 more than the previous year. That's not great. And an additional two-year sp uh, sponsorship deal uh, worth $5,500. Uh, so that's about a thirteen hundred, twelve to thirteen hundred dollar increase. So that's not bad. So a little over uh, about twelve hundred and fifty dollars more money coming in. New scouting budget, and the board has announced new stadium plans in the city of Tiverton. Uh, it will cost around three million, uh, but they will sell Ladies Mead for six hundred thousand. And they will. They have uh, been able to finance without any external funding. Additional funding has a stadium sponsorship deal worth seventy thousand and a one point three million dollar grant from the city. Okay, uh, you know personally, I don't like cities getting involved. I think owners should foot the bill for their own stadiums. Uh, just me, uh, <laughs> but uh, you know whatever. Uh, so anyway, this is going to have a capacity of 4,130. Let's jump in real quick. So it's going to be a much smaller stadium. Ladies Mead, oh wait, are we playing in St. James Park this year? Okay, here we go. Ladies Mead, 3,500 capacity. The field was very poor. I was hoping just to get it relayed, but I guess there's, let's see, 3,500. Let's look at the rules here. So minimum stadium capacity is 4,000. So Ladies Mead wouldn't have been big enough. They could have spent money to expand it, but I guess it was an older stadium. So that 4,000. So we're going to go up 130 above that. Grass, 
no roof, no undersoil heating, which is problematic, but we could still have uh, rainouts. And we are going to rent St. James Park after our promotion. The club's objective of building a new stadium has finally been realized. Let's take a look at club vision. Okay, I don't see anything in there, but that's all right. We'll be completing our course. Oh, it has been completed. I start a new one? Not yet. All right. So that's interesting. St. James Park. Not sure what the deal is. It's in Exeter. It's got 8,700 capacity. We're not going to sell that out, right? I want to look something up. All right. That, so we're right up here now. That's Tiverton. And St. James is down in Exeter. So farther south towards the coast. Uh, 25, 14. So 14 miles on the quickest route. About 30 minutes, about an hour by bus, uh, 28 minutes by private car. So I guess we'll have to charter a bus every day for, uh, or, you know, for match days or whatever. Uh, don't know if we'll have to be practicing down here. Don't know if we need to move. We're going to be coming back to Tiverton, so I don't see the point of buying a new stadium. Now, when is completion date june of 2067 so that's two years we could get promoted and make this stadium irrelevant uh by that point that's one of the problems with the game but it is what it is so we're going to be making that run I, i'll probably rent uh, a new place down there just to save the travel time uh the players it's up to them and then uh I'll, I'll guess I'll rent my current home out in Tiverton until I'm ready to come back in two, two years. Just to make it convenient for me. All right, well, let me get into the transfer window. Uh, we do have a negative balance now that they've sucked out some money. So that's uh, not helpful. And I can't go overboard on wages. I, we have a lot of room, about $10,000, actually committed spending. We've got about $20,000, uh, but I still need to kind of control the finances. So uh, let me look at, let me get into the off season here and we'll come back uh, around July 1st, which is kind of when the big, when the transfer window opens and all the big moves uh, start taking place. Uh, so you guys hang tight. We'll be right back. All right, we do have some new information coming in. Uh, record low number of defeats, two losses in the entire season. 120 points accrued is a new National League South record. Uh, record low number of defeats uh, is a Vanarama South record, in addition to being a club record. Williams sets a new average rating, which is uh, the Nas uh, National League South record. Highest rating now, breaking the previous appearance. Uh, Williams breaks the goal scoring record by four, which was set in real life back in 2016 by Dave Tarpey. So that's a huge accomplishment, I think. Uh, most man of the match awards, which was recently set his own record uh, of 14 uh, two years ago. Graham Williams is named Player of the Season for the Vonorama South. That is a great year for him. Boy, those are great numbers. And National League South top goal scorer is Graham Williams as well. We knew that. Very good season for him. And we'll be trying to sell Bone in the offseason. He's uh, not happy with how I've been treating him. Tough shit. <laughs> All right, let me get back into some transfer stuff. We'll be back uh, for that. Just in case there was any doubt, I have been named head coach of the season for the National League South. And uh, yeah, general manager West Forest is happy. Uh, they've cut our transfer budget to zero. So even if we sell players, we don't get any money into our transfer budget, which I think is okay as long as it helps our balance. But, I mean, we're looking at almost a million dollars now. General maintenance, 2.9. So we had money, fellas. We had money. You guys chose to screw me over, and now you're screwing me over more. <laughs> you're not helping me any.
I do have the twenty, you know, twenty thousand dollars. So we'll be able to sign some players. Just have to be very diligent about who we sign. We aren't gonna. Be, we're gonna have to go for a lot of freeze. And of course, we have to look for younger players. So that's. Uh, and we can't find a senior affiliate. Ugh, how complicated is this? There's a million clubs out there in higher leagues than us. You go, hey, we would like to be able to take players on loan from you and play them. Too complicated. All right, well, we'll try that again later. All right, we have reached July 1st, and so the bulk of our transfers have come in. Let's take a look. Six new players coming in. Uh, first is Jerry Henry, 17-year-old striker, one-and-a-half-star current. Uh, B grade on him. And uh, he can play right wing, and that's kind of where I uh, foresee him. But I think he could be challenging for the number three or four spot in the striker role, too. He's got some pace and acceleration. Very good determination. Solid first touch, dribbling, and finishing skills for this level. So pretty happy with that signing. Then we brought in Macaulay Ellis, an 18-year-old midfielder. We get a B-minus grade on him. He's a three-star current, five-star potential, and he's probably sliding right into our starting 11. Uh, he's not very fast, not very fast, uh, but, you know, he's at least average for this level because, you know, those would be grays at, uh, at a higher league. But he's got really good determination, leadership, work rate. His passing is off the charts for this level. And solid first touch. And he can mark, double-digit marking. So I think he's going to be a really good pickup for us this year. Uh, we did sign, so just to kind of refresh your memory. So this is a youth challenge, but it's not a youth academy challenge. So the mandate is to play the kids. If we have kids coming up through the system, that are ready to play, we need to bring them up. So even if they're a two-star, get them into the team. And so that's the goal. If there's a hole or we need depth, we can sign somebody else, but we still want to go for kind of young players. I've kind of got a built-in number of 25 or 26 as the max. I try to go 24. So that's kind of the rule of thumb that we're going with here. So I I thought I was going to need a striker. I may not after all, but we signed Matt McDonald, a 24-year-old striker on a free. Uh, he can play central mid. He can play right winger. Uh, he's got pace and acceleration, solid determination, just short of that 12 mark, but he can cross, dribble. Uh, he can finish. So I like a lot of what he brings. He has leadership. So we've got some good skills in here. And with the younger kids, even though he's only he's 24, he's a little older than quite a few of the kids. So, you know, he could make a good mentor possibly. And so that's uh, what we're looking at for him. Uh, we did need to upgrade right wing. So we had Lee White out there, Bliss Cotterell, whose contract was up this year. So we were kind of weak on the right side. So I brought in a couple of guys. So first off, we brought in Anthony Carmichael. He is going to probably be our starter this year. Three and a half star current, four star potential. Uh, he came up through the Torquay uh, ranks, but um, solid pace and acceleration. Determination is off the charts at 17. Uh, he's got good marking ability out on the wing. Decent passing, free kick taking, dribbling, crossing, first touch. So I see a lot of skills in here to play either the mid-right or attacking mid-right. Um, just whichever way we go in our tactic. Uh, then I brought in kind of his replacement and a guy that we'll be looking at for the future. He actually came available after I had already offered Carmichael, or I probably wouldn't have offered Carmichael. This guy looks really good. Kurt Scovsby. Sco uh, uh, he came up through Brackley. We got him on a free. Very, very good physicals. Flair. Uh, determination's a little low, uh, you know, for the, for the Sean factor that we're kind of going with at these lower levels. But he's a decent crosser right now, good first touch, good passing, good technique. So I think, again, he can play to those two, right, uh, to those two uh, mid-right positions. 
and give him another year or two to develop. And I think he'll be ready to step in for McDonald. Uh, I'm sorry, for Carmichael. But those two guys, I think, are big upgrades over Lee, Bliss Cotterill, the guys that we had here. Uh, we also signed 24-year-old Tony Doyle. Uh, he is a striker and another right winger just for some depth. More in the striker role. Decent enough physicals, flair, determination's a little low. Great first touch and finishing for this level. So 25 goals in 124 matches for Torquay. Uh, so definitely like him coming on board. So that is our six guys. They go ahead and pull their numbers out of the bin. We did release some players, Justin Bone, Bliss Cotterell, Henry McCann, Slam Dunk, Darren Johnson, Cardinal Bissix, John Rawling, and Christian Simmons all leave the club at end of contract. Uh, so we free up that. We jump into finances. Uh, so we have dropped our uh, wage bill down to 36000 So we've got a lot of room there. We have used up all of our transfer revenue. Uh, all of those transfer guys, uh, a couple of them cost us a little money. Jerry Henry cost us $31,000. Uh, Kurt Scovby cost us thirty-seven and a half. dollars uh, Those were pretty big signings. And uh, everybody else was on freeze. Uh, they were end of contract, but I guess there was something because of their age that you had to pay. Let me double check. Yeah, both of them were 17. So I guess when you do sign a player at a younger age, they're, even though they're out of contract, there's some kind of fee that you've got to pay out because I noticed that last year too. So that's our transfer business. Taking a look at the team report. So what I've got filtered by here is for everybody basically. Uh, let's see. We'll take out trials. All right. So Humphreys in goal, Michael Hughes, James Haney. Uh, we just re-signed him to a new deal. Uh, Dave Hugel, Lewis Taylor, Rowan Bacon on the left side, Tierney, Hemmings, Allard, and Brown in the mid. And then Perinello, Isquierdo, Taylor, Brown on the right. Moving into the mid, we've got Nuevo, Ellis, the newcomer, Bliss, Bryant, McDonald are in that mix. This is if we play the 4-2-3-1. Uh, out left, we've got Mudge and Ireland competing out there. Nuevo and Brunt in the mid. And Carmichael and Scavby on the right, along with McDonald as well. And then that leaves Williams up front with Mudge, Doyle. And I did re-sign Tim Cook. I wasn't going to, but I was able to get him at a reasonable deal. And what got me is this one here. I don't know what that would do for our fans. I don't know that I've ever seen this one. So that one got my attention. He's not old. He's still two-star, but, I mean, he had a great year last year, right? 19 goals, 15 assists, played a 7-3-8. And, you know, he's a good player for the North-South. So I still think he's a very good depth player. I really kept him because of this fan's perception. I just have no idea what that could do potentially to the fans. So anyway, just uh, we did re-sign him. It's about a hundred, about a hundred dollars more than we had him at it last season. Uh, so that is where we're at. Uh, here you can see our friendlies for the month. What the? Oh, that's Cardiff met you. <laughs> Feed the Owen, right? Feed the Owen. Uh, and then we open up against Stockport end of the month or first of next month, first of August. But uh, you can see we've got Villa, Aldersh uh, Aldershot Town. That's a low end team. Uh, Mersum, that's another, you know, those were added in by my assistant manager. Uh, Darby County from Wimbledon, Didcot, Kidder, Kidderminster. So we do have a couple of big clubs that we've brought in. Uh, we've already played Barnsley, and we got a surprising 2-2 draw there. Mudge and Nuevo with the goals in that one. Uh, and these are all basically uh, Barnsley, Villa, uh, Derby, Wimbledon. Those are to try to make some money to offset our overall balance. We'll see how that goes. Um, yeah. So anyway, I will be back for the opening match. So I'm going to get through all the friendlies. We'll come back and play Stockport today. 
Uh, we'll see how the uh, finances pan out uh, with the friendlies. And uh, so we'll see you guys back here in just a second. All right, let's get into the match of the day real quick. Just a couple of catch-ups. Here's a look at the squad dynamics. Everything's looking pretty good. Uh, we have kept um, Ireland and Hemmings as our captain and vice captain. Uh, taking a look at the competition, we are picked 22nd at 50 to 1. Not bad odds right in the group. Uh, I don't know if that stays up, though. I think, well, let's confirm. Anything below 21st or below. All right, so they are picking us to go down, but I think we're within striking distance of a lot of these 20, 33 and 20 to 1 clubs. Uh, I mean, we know we can compete with Bella Ricky, right? So we should be up in that area. Uh, so anyway, taking a look at the uh, schedule for the preseason, I'll let you just kind of take a look at that, pause it and take a look at it. Goal scorers are in there. Tim Cook had a pretty good preseason uh, coming back with his new contract. Graham Williams scored as well. The only two losses, Aston Villa and Brighton and Hove, and then uh, Barnsley, we had a draw. So, you know, it was three of the big clubs. Now, I did write down, all right, let's jump into finances. So when I started the friendlies, we were 858783 in debt. So we've gone another 40000 in the hole. All right, so anyway, we're going to open up with Stockport today. Let's get to it. We're at home, 819 tickets sold. So that's already double last year's average of 416. Right, that's positive. All right, we're going to go with a very familiar looking lineup, right? Um, the only new face in here is Carmichael out on the right wing. Uh, we have Taylor. Uh, Scovby will be on the bench, Cook and Allard as well. I would like possibly, let's remove Hughes. I'm going to have to get in the habit of that because we do need a, I'd like John Perinello on the bench. But he is only 16. Let's give him a little bit of time. Uh, Macaulay Ellis. I want him on the bench. And actually, I want to give him his debut. Let's do that. And is he a decent... He's, he's a decent deep-lying playmaker. Remember, he's got really good passing ability, too. So, yeah, let's do that. So, two players making their debuts. And one new player on the bench. And we are underway. Our first season in the Vanarama National League. And again, the goal this year, I think, is just to stay up, right? Oh, and we work it all the way around. And Anthony Carmichael, in the fifth minute, gets his debut goal. That was huge. And just look at that. Ellis with the assist to Carmichael, the two new boys getting the goal and the assist to open our account for the season. That's astounding. How astounding is that? Oh, Hugel misplays the ball. That was horrible. And Noguchi is unmarked. What a save. And then lumped out of play. All right, some lucky defense. They've got the corner. I didn't look to see where Stockport were figured to finish. Oh, and Mudge with the foul. I don't think it was violent. I don't think there was anything card worthy there. Let's encourage him again. There's Ellis. Oh, good through ball into his buddy Carmichael. And it's squared into Mudge. Carmichael picks up an assist to go with his goal. And Mudge on the score sheet to open his account for the season. Some good ball work between those two guys. I am excited about what they're going to bring to the table. And we're seeing big dividends already. Williams turns on McGinko. He's into the box. And oh, what a save by Deegan. Oh, unlucky for Williams. Unlucky. I thought he was on the score sheet there. Crossed in. Hugel gets over. 
Hit it out. Good job. And there's Carmichael. Bringing it up the right flank. Plays it up ahead. There's Williams. To the touchline. He squares it into Mudge. Mudge has his second of the game. Williams with an assist to open his account in the attacking categories for this season. And it's Tiverton 3, Stockport nil after 23 minutes. Things are going well. We're going to go ahead and go praise here. I uh, should have held off on that. Gaston Noguchi, back of the net with a set piece. But still, 3-1. to one. All right, come on, boys. Don't let this get away from us. Over the top, Mudge. On the run, he beats his tackle. He's looking for somebody. It gets tackled away. Out to Ireland. Ireland into Nuevo, but he was offsides. Not very much, I don't think. But enough that he looked offsides. All right, they break us down easily enough to get across midfield. And we settle in. Carmichael pounces on an errant pass. Uh, he, he, had, he had both strikers there. He could have squared two. Nuevo was coming in to help. But he wanted another one. Oh, that one was close by Asamoa. And uh, whew, luckily that went wide of the mark. All right, let's encourage him again. Noguchi. Oh, the header, Asamoa gets past Humphreys, and it's Tiverton 3, Stockport now with two goals, and we're 40 minutes in with five goals in our first match. Oh, that was bad. Hemmings, Tierney, neither one of them were marking him very close. Let's check our marking here. I won't, you know, out of possession. We do have tighter marking. Let's tell him to stay on feet so we don't get beaten. Uh, wow. Wow. All right, Williams controls it. Oh, my God, that's got to be a straight red. It is. <laughs> and they immediately make a sub, and they go to a 4-3-1-1. All right, is Quiendo. Lays it down into the corner to Carmichael. The cross is in. Oh, it's just headed out. I thought Williams had a shot at that one. All right, Hugel, not, not smart there, buddy. Played it right back to a man that had, was, had somebody on him. And Williams misses his first attempt, and it goes over the net, and that gets us to halftime. It's been a pretty exciting first half. Uh, let's go pumping the fist. Keep going. There, a man down. We'll go with that. We're going to go with uh, encouragement again. All right. Is Quando into the box? It's Mudge, and he's too much underneath that header, and it sails up into the stands. And they they're going to have to send uh, some security or something up there because no fans over there to get it. Ireland beats his man. There's Ellis into the box. Knocked away. And Mudge goes near post, and it's saved by Deegan. I'm really interested to see Ireland here, because remember we had a fitness issue with him last year? All right, this is Carmichael. And it's into the net. His second goal of the game. What a debut for him. And uh, he... Is a that's one of his strengths is a set piece taker, and I think he's a little bit better than Cook, who took most of our set pieces when he was on the pitch last season. And that spots us a two goal advantage. Tiverton four, Stockport two. A good foot in by Hemmings to knock it away from Asamoa. Carmichael, what can he do? Squared in, it's Mudge. No, it's Williams. Mudge got the tip, and then Williams poached it. Uh, Williams is on the score sheet. I think Mudge would have had the goal, but I think Williams was pissed off that he's the only one that hasn't scored today. 
Uh, yeah, I... Uh, Mudge unleashed a volley, but Williams gets the credit. We'll take it. We will take it. Near post is cleared out. Our Michael back on it into Ellis. Oh, that wasn't good. He was trying to thread a needle there, it looked like. There's been some good ball movement. I've been really happy with that. And uh, Ellis on it again. I'm wondering, though, if we take off. And it may not even be on. I need to double check. All right, there was some tight marking, but oh, it gets away. Mudge is on it. Mudge is looking for some support. Ireland's in there. Into Mudge again. Oh, and he's taken down in the box. That's going to be a penalty. And it's going to be Mudge stepping up for his hat trick. And it's saved by Deegan. Mudge doesn't normally take the penalties, but I think since he was sitting on the hat trick, they let him take it. Near post. And it's headed away. We just can't get the ball over that center, center back there. And I think there's going to be another foul. And we don't see anything here. All right, we're going to go ahead with uh, praise. All right, let's uh, go ahead and sub off. I'm going to sub off Hemming. And I'm going to bring Taylor on for Hugel. Let me give some more thought to that. They're both sitting on yellows. We'll put him back on. He can only play for one guy. I think Hugel's having the worst game, so let's put him in there. Uh, Nuevo for Bliss. Let's do that in the number 10. So we'll make our first subage in the 76th minute. We'll praise him again. Bliss is there to control it. A uh, little attempt by Carmichael. Ireland falls back to pick up the clearance. It's out to Taylor. Squared in. Williams goes off the woodwork. And we are still holding on to that three-goal advantage. Into the 88th minute. Let's do a time-wasting sub. And I'm going to have to get the doorbell's going to ring in just a second, so I will pause this here. All right, what do we want? Ellis is not doing, I mean, you know, he hadn't looked bad, but he's only playing a 6-4. If we slide Bliss back to him, and we can play Tim Cook in that number 10, that's a place that we want him to develop. Three minutes of stoppage time. Carmichael has it knocked away. Tierney heads it clear, but not far enough. Asamoa gets on it. And it's, oh, and there's a penalty. I didn't see who caused it. I think it was Tierney. But he just came flying in out of the corner of my eye, and they get one back. It's Tiverton 3, Stockport. Tiverton 5, Stockport 3. And Asamoa looks uh, like he's up for some hijinks in the final minutes of the match. Cook into the box. Oh, and Mudge got a foot on it. Oh, my goodness. I thought that was in. Mudge blistered that ball. Very unlucky. Uh, they are not looking. Uh, Tierney gets beaten over the top on the header. I, I have looked for several center backs and just can't can't find one that, that fits what I need to do, and that would be an upgrade. And it says Tierney played a 7, so Nuevo disallowed goal. Mudge with the missed penalty. That's going to be heartbreaking. Uh, outstretched arms. Well done, guys. A good win. Certainly a great way to open our books in the new league. Uh, top form, what is that? Your team hasn't lost in 30 matches, and only 36% of all football manager players have that. This guy is one of them. All right, let's continue out of here. We've accepted those couple of friendlies. 
Uh, we go top of the league. Debutante Carmichael makes immediate debut. Ellis made his debut. Carmichael, two goals, one assist, and five key passes. So that's solid. All right, so we are top of the table after one match. Granted, it's early. How many matches do we play? I haven't been in this league in a while. 46, so it's a championship schedule. Oh, my God. I hate 46-game schedules. Those seasons just last forever. <laughs> All right, but let's take a look. So, you know, you guys know the team, so let's just kind of catch you up to speed on who's in the Vonorama National. Uh, so, you know, Bella Ricky, one of our, from our days down in the south, uh, the Gloucester, Gloucester, depending on where you're from and how you pronounce it. Torquay, Chester, Eastleigh, Forest Green got relegated. Hartlepool. Uh, only time I ever heard of Hart first time I ever heard of Hartlepool was uh, because of Peter Taylor uh, uh, talking about uh, him being there with, uh, I guess, Brian Clough or before Brian Clough. Uh, but that's what I remember Hartlepool from. Uh, you know, so there's the rest of them. Josh Warrington's uh, down there. Scunthorpe, Southport, who we just beat. Uh, Stockport, I'm sorry. And they're on a minus two goal differential. We're plus two. Guys, we'll be back. Hit that like button. Subscribe for daily football manager content. And we'll see you next episode. Take care. Bye.